Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be doing a sort of breakdown analysis and ranking of the various weapons that you can use in Clan Wars or you should be using in Clan Wars. Uh, the reason for this video is that I uh, figured there are a lot of players or newer to the game, I say newer, could be a couple of years, uh, who want to try to get into Clan Wars and obviously earn that uranium because, you know, once you're in the top 10 clan, you're earning about 10,000 coins in uranium a week uh, with a premium, which is pretty insane. So I imagine there's a lot of guys who want to break into a top 10 clan, but obviously that's quite diff difficult. Not top 10, sorry, top 60 clan to earn uranium, because everyone in top 60 at this point probably has like relics or fused relics. So obviously if you're newer, then it's going to be quite hard to get in to beat those guys, and you're going to need to spend as little coins as possible on as, as competitive a build as possible. So that's where this came from. I figured it would help. If there's one thing I know in this game, it's Clan Wars. It's basically all I play in this game. If it wasn't for daily missions for the Battle Pass, I would have more Clan Wars matches than I would PvP. Because I just don't need to play PvP anymore. It's no point. If I test the build out... Yeah, that's pretty much it. The only time I play PvP, actual PvP, is to test a new build out. Everything else I just do patrols for my dailies. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go into technology tree here and we're just going to rank each of the various guns and if they're crap, I will tell you they're crap, you shouldn't waste the coins on them. If they're good, I'm going to tell you why they're good. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to probably point out my top three competitive relics, which I think are the best, because this is an interesting conversation to be had around it. And I think what makes a gun truly meta is just versatility, like first and foremost, in my experience. Um, I'm not going to do any stupid, like, glorified Microsoft PowerPoints, like, drag images or anything and do, like, an AE, or not, not, I'm not going to do any of that crap. I'm just going to tell you if a gun is good or not, if it's bad, there's no point in me rambling on with pointless information. Right, so, with regards to these guns, the only epics that can be used in Clan Wars, or, like, should be used in Clan Wars, are something like an Incinerator Hover, maybe a Gravistar Dog, or a Remedy Dog. But besides that, you're not going to want to use epics in Clan Wars. You're not going to get very far with them, especially up against relics. If you want to break into a top 60 clan, you're going to need legendaries or higher. So I'm just going to cover all of the legendaries and all of the relics. I'm going to go column by column. So like that, 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 that. And basically just tell you if you should buy it or not and if it's good. So that is how this is going to go. And yeah, let's start. All right, let's get this done, shall we? Like I said, if a gun is crap, I'm going to tell you it's crap. If I think it's good, I will tell you it's good, and I think you should buy it. But let's start with the Vindicator. Vindicators are useless. Uh, their spread is way too high. Their damage is far too low. And if you're buying legendaries, you're going to buy, need to buy at least four Vindicators as opposed to, like, you know, three aspects or three nothing. So it's more coins as well. And, yeah, it's just it's not a very good uh, gun at all. The only thing that has gone for it is hit scan. But all machine guns have the except for reapers. So yeah, I wouldn't get Vindicators. Imps are in a similar boat. They have really good damage, imps, but they have terrible range, really high spread, and you're gonna need to buy at least four of them. The also the big problem with imps is that they're quite hard to armor around because they don't have much durability. Bear in mind if a if a gun has less than 250 dura, it's not gonna survive a scope shot with an armor mori so you're gonna lose imps all the damn time and yeah they're just not very good you're gonna lose the guns way too often for it to be worth it and there's just better machine guns out there aspects aspects pretty damn good actually they have pretty good damage the uh, you can armor them pretty well because they have a really small hitbox you can tuck them behind cabins on spider builds for, an, for instance and basically they're impossible to hit uh, besides that, yeah, probably in terms of legendary machine guns, you would probably want either Aspects or Nothangs. Nothangs are in a similar boat, right? they got good damage, good accuracy, good spread, and they're just pretty damn solid. Punishers are very, very good. They are one of the best weapons in the game. They have very good DPS, very good accuracy, very good perk, good Dura for their size, and they can fight anything. A Punisher is good up against hovers, it's good up against spiders, and it's good up against dogs. And if you're looking for a DPS build in this game, Punishers are top tier. 
are probably the best tents in the game by far. Okay, moving on. Arbiters, Arbiters are pretty crap just because you need the perk to do any real damage and it takes too long to get that perk going. Plus if the perk gets interrupted at any point, it's just not worth it. Um, so yeah, like not very good Dura. Armoring them isn't easy and it's just not worth it in my opinion. Reapers, Reapers are pretty decent. They're, actually, they're very good against Firebugs because Firebugs can't shoot back. But the biggest thing holding them back, and the perk is actually really good because they don't stop shooting. The biggest thing holding them back is that they are not hit scan. They're only machine gun that isn't hit scan. So you're gonna lose, you're gonna miss a lot more often than you would with a hit scan weapon. Uh, for instance, if you're shooting at say a Firebug with uh, aspects and you shoot at the back of a Firebug. With hit scan weapons, you can just burst the cabin and you're going to land almost every single shot into that cabin and you're going to kill him quickly. If you're shooting at him with a Reaper, then certain bullets are going to go too high, they're going to hit something. So if you're shooting at a build that's going left or right, you're going to hit random things. So it's going to take you a lot longer to kill that thing with a non hit scan weapon as it would be to a hit scan. So Reapers are good against firebugs, but against everything else, they are meh at best. And I would not recommend them I, in most situations aspects or not things are just better the only reason i run them personally is because they're good against fireworks and that's it um right moving on passes passes are crap on console they're good on pc from what i'm told because of the accuracy of the mouse but on console they're just absolutely useless and they are probably dirt cheap as <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah for legendary that's kind of pathetic so don't use pass they were op when they first came out and then they nerfed them into the absolute ground and now they're useless so just forget it exists as far as i'm concerned nidhogs nidhogs are pretty bad i wouldn't recommend them they deal good damage but their range is atrocious atrocious you basically need to be in headbutting range to actually deal any damage and they're pretty big as well and they don't have much dura so you're gonna damn taken off all the damn time uh yomangunda's exact same problem range is too small yes they heat yes they have good damage but you need to get far too close and they're far too big you're gonna get stripped you're gonna lose guns way too often so don't get these in my opinion hammerfold and by extension breakers are the shotguns that you want in my opinion hammerfold is pretty good legendaries their perk is very very good especially against hovers um they're very good at the moment on like fat humpbacks they have decent damage Pretty poor range, but at the end of the day, it's a shotgun and it's a legendary, so what do you want? But it's better than all the alternatives. By extension, Breaker is very good. Um, with the perk, you've got good range and you've got good burst damage when you get up close as a normal shotgun. Breakers are very good up against hovers and other dogs. They tend to struggle against spiders, unless you're a very good player. But like I said, two out of the three archetypes they're good against, and they're quite good in the meta at the moment, so... If you're looking for a shotgun, definitely go down these two. Auto cannons are universally crap, in my opinion. There are two main things holding back these guns. The main thing is that they actually have three, three things that's bad about auto cannons and why you shouldn't buy them. First thing is they're not hit scan. So like the machine guns, if a build isn't hit scan, you're going to miss a lot more shots. You're going to hit things you don't need to hit and you're going to waste a lot of shots essentially. So that's the problem with that. The second one is that auto cannons don't actually do that much alpha damage. The whole point of auto cannons is that they're basically machine guns with explosive damage. So if you're shooting at, say, the back of a fat humpback dog, where all the armor is like nice and compact, you can hit multiple armor pieces at once. But if you're shooting at the front of a build, say it's cabin, that explosion damage is wasted. It's not going to do anything for you. And at that point, you've just got a basically the same damage as a machine gun but you don't have hit scan and you have more energy drain cyclones and still winds have the problem whereby if you have two of them your dps isn't high enough and if you have three of them you you don't have enough utility like three of these guns you're gonna need one radiator that's 16 energy at that point you've got no pegasus no one memory you know even with an odin you're only going one of these things and your build isn't going to be that strong so they're not very good at all Starfalls, the damage just isn't there. Um, they, like I said, anti-aircraft gun is basically meant that way. It's crap against anything else. Right. 
cannons. Mammoths are pretty good only really against hovers though, just because their alpha damage is low, but they get the perk. So if you're shooting it against a hover, the perk will hit about half the build. Whereas if you're shooting at, say, a dog's cab or a spider's cab, and their alpha damage is really low, and you're just not going to get the damage out that you need. Moving on to Mastodons. Mastodons are meta as hell. They're amazing. They are basically direct impact incinerators. They heat, from what I'm told, they heat to 70% on a full shot. Um, the heat is also in a bubble, so say if you hit the side of a spider, sometimes the heat will travel through to whatever it's done, so it's cabin. And you've seen them in my Clan Wars clips. I've been running Mastodons for ages because Mastodons are amazing in Clan Wars. You lead with the Mastodons, you heat up a guy, your DPS follows that up because he's heated. They take double damage or close to double damage and you kill him a lot more faster. They also deal a lot of damage on their own. They deal like 780, I think, base damage on a Masto, which is quite a bit. And yeah, they're like, they're mostly meant as a utility build. I think that's a lot, that's what people tend to misinterpret about Mastodons or tend to get wrong about Mastodons. They are not meant for their damage. They are meant for their support. They're a bit of a hybrid, but you want to think of a Mastodon more as an incinerator build than a cannon. It's basically who you heat up for your teammates that's important. Uh, but they're very, very good. You can fight spiders, hovers, and dogs. If you hit something with a Mastodon, it's going to hurt. And if your teammates can fire, can uh, follow up on that heating, they're probably dead. Anything in the game, you know. That's why we I use it so often. I've been using it for so long. Typhoons, Typhoons are decent long-range cannon, but they're nothing special. Their damage isn't too impressive. Sorry, not Typhoons. Tsunamis. But that also applies to Typhoons. Um, these two are basically not that great. The, ra the ranged hovers are okay, but the Typhoon is only good now on a Whaler perk, in my opinion. With a Typhoon Whaler, you get in the Whaler perk for like three out of the four of the shots. So on a Typhoon Whaler hover, you shoot the Typhoons once, it fully charges the Whaler perk, and then you can fire the Typhoon over three more times while that Whaler perk is active. You shoot, it'll start, get another one halfway, and another one before it finishes. So Typhoon Whaler Hover is very good. Well, actually, it's pretty good. It's not very good, to be fair. It's pretty good, compared, especially when compared to other Typhoons, but that's only with Fused Typhoons and the Fused Whaler for power. So you're going to need to put a lot into a build, a lot of coins into that build before you have a decent ranged hover. It's not, it's not going to be a world beat or anything. It's just going to be decent. Without the Whaler, I wouldn't recommend Typhoons at all. Just, you can just ignore a Typhoon hover most of the time. It's only since they've had the Whaler cabin in that you actually have to care about them. Um, Avalanche is crap, in my opinion. I've had quite a few discussions about this, but... It's got buffed recently, but it's still useless, in my opinion. It seems to be something wrong with the Avalanche where... It will cap out after it hits a certain amount of pieces. So the alpha damage is pretty decent. I think it's around a mass though. Maybe a bit less. But the explosion rate is really good. But what happens is you'll shoot a build. I've shot backs of like humpbacks where all of the armor is right next to each other. And if you hit something like that with something like an avalanche, which is pure HE. It's, well, it's, it's not a balance. But if you hit something like that with an avalanche, you expect for it to take a lot of pieces off. And it just doesn't. It won't, I've been shot in games by avalanches maybe a dozen times in my Master Spider, and my build is still pretty okay afterwards. It's just not what you'd expect from a Sturm Tiger turret for anyone who's played War Thunder. It's pretty bad, in my opinion. Uh, moving on, we've got Rocket. So the Waltz is okay as a legendary. It's got good damage, but the Rocket trajectory kind of whirls too much. And you miss a lot of the shots, and it's just kind of underwhelming because of it. That's the main thing holding it back. I wouldn't recommend it. Helicons are decent. Actually, no, they're pretty good relics, to be fair. They're very good against spiders. If you're on a Helicon Hover, then Helicon Hover is basically a good counter to a spider. It's very good against spiders, especially on Catalina. Because you don't need to be too accurate. As long as you hit the shots, you're going to need a lot of damage. Uh, so they're very good against spiders, they're okay against dogs, they're not very good against hovers. The projectile speed is okay, but it's not enough to where you're going to want to be fighting like a typhoon or a hover. A typhoon or a hover will, should beat a helicon hover at mid-range or, or longer. It's only at like really close range, you have a problem, but even then, if you're pushing someone on a helicon with close range, you're not going to get a perk, that's my point as well. Helicons are decent, but I wouldn't 
go in front for my first relics at all if I was playing this game new. Um, Heathers, pretty bad these days, wouldn't recommend them at all, they've been nerfed into the ground. Back in the day when I first came out, Heathers hit like a truck, you could one-shot build. In fact, I've, yeah, I've been in a Clan Wars game once where a Clan mate just flat out one-shotted another Hover from 100 to 0 in the first 5 seconds. Um, but they've been nerfed into the ground ever since, and these days you get shot by Heather, it takes you probably three or four hits before you're in some real trouble. So I wouldn't recommend them. Hurricanes are for players who can't aim in PvP, and I wish they never added them into the game. Wretches are okay, they're pretty, actually no, they're pretty bad. They deal good damage, but they have terrible durability, and they have a big hitbox in comparison. Uh, Retra is going to struggle to get much damage. Retra is going to struggle to do much in Clan Wars unless he's up against only firebugs. If you go up against anything that can strip you, you're screwed. Because your, your guns are way too easy to hit. So a Breaker will ruin you, a Punisher will ruin you, a Scorp will ruin you. And it is not very good, to be honest. I wouldn't recommend them at all. Athena's not very good. Uh, easy to hit, not that much damage. If you're shooting at like a Bastion with the energy damage, it can be okay, I suppose, but wouldn't recommend them. And they are expensive as hell, so don't bother. Pulsars, Pulsars are pretty good. I would recommend, that if you wanted a legendary ranged hover, I would recommend Pulsars over, say, Tsunamis or Waltzes. Uh, very good Dura, easy to hit, do energy damage. Uh, they deal more damage the modules. I preferred your old perk when they first came out they were amazing but they're, they're solid to be fair pulsars i know a clan wars guy who runs these over scorpions because so scorpions are so bad at the moment which is insane but yeah i would recommend this for a ranged other helios is for uh if you want to play a spider and don't want to think about the game at all uh, yeah you just run helioses you hold down the trigger the entire time and you charge at people they're very easy to use they do a lot of damage but they're boring as shit Destructors, they're okay. They're for pretty skill players, in my opinion. If you're on a destructor, you're going to need to be very accurate, um, which I am not a very accurate player. I'm good at like leading shots and whatnot, but in terms of sheer accuracy, I'm not very good. They deal a lot of damage, so if you're shooting at cabins or guns, uh, you can do pretty well against. But if there's multiple pieces of armor or something like that, or you have to chew for like the back armor of a build, destructors are pretty terrible. It's only when destructors can shoot at one piece right in front of them that they're good, like a cabin right in front of them or a master right in front of them. Besides that, they did pretty good legendaries to be fair, but they're not anything special. Uh, Spark, and I'll include Spark, uh, flashes in this because they're basically just the same. Sparks and flashes are pretty useless these days. The only time you'd see them back in the day was on firebugs. So you'd have two firebugs and a flash or spark uh, just to slow people down, but it's not worth it these days it's much better to go with three firebugs as opposed to this you can catch hovers with three firebugs anyway since hovers are slower than they used to be like most hover teams will run red hovers which is only 75 you know a uh, light dog is going at like 105 so you can catch them without the spark and if a two firebug one spark player ends up going up against a three firebug player he lost just because of the math you know so that's why that's shifted. Wouldn't recommend these at all. Assemblers are shit in every single way. They are just terrible. Do not buy them. Toadfish, uh, they're okay actually. Um, they For people who are more into the game, I would say you kind of want to have a bit of fun. But they're not bad, to be fair. They have a very huge hitbox. And they have, they're very heavy, so you're going to need some fusions to make them work. But... They're, not, they're, they're okay. They're like budget scorpions. I would recommend pulsars over them personally. But they're kind of fun, to be fair. Uh, harvesters and Charybdis wouldn't recommend them. It's much better. It's much safer to run things like remedies or dracos or bugs as opposed to these because you can protect these within a build. These have to be on the exterior in order to do damage and they'll take impact damage and they can get shot easier. Which is why you just see dogs running firebugs these days or flame weapons. In terms of both of them, they're both equally useless, and I would rather run Dracos. Um, Dracos, pretty damn good. You can armor them well, you can hide them under a build. 
Fat Draco humpbacks or Fat Draco Yokozuna dogs at the moment are pretty damn meta and pretty cheap. Just because they're so hard to deal with. Uh, so yeah, they're very good. Very good durability. Very hard to kill. I would rec If you're going for a dog build, first time in, definitely do this tree by here. So you go Remedies, then you go Dracos, then you go Bugs. Because they can fight anything. It's the, they're very versatile. A Firebug can fight a Hover team, it can fight another dog team, and it can fight a Spider team. They're very versatile weapons, which is why you see them so often. Mandrix, Mandrix ain't too bad these days actually. If you want to, I would recommend it for people who are pretty well into the game, who have like a, a lineup of Clan Wars builds. But if you want an artillery build these days, I would recommend a Mandrix over a Hever for sure. Mandrix are very hard to see in the air, you can't really see them at all. So if you want to mess around with that, you can. And yeah, they're pretty decent. They got an energy change somewhat recently, so they're down to seven now, which is nice. So yeah, if you want artillery, I would go Mandrix over Heather, but I still wouldn't recommend it. Artillery builds in this game aren't very good. Scaddy is still crap. It's just a terrible... I prefer Draco or Firebug over Scaddy. It's still useless. Um, Narwhal. Narwhal's actually really good. If you've got the new battle pass, you should think about getting as many Narwhals as you can. The reasons narwhal the reason narwhals are so good is because they ignore resistances. So if you shoot a narwhal, for instance, can one shot a heavy eight by four. They just ignore frames, and if someone is frozen or if a build is frozen, it completely negates all resistances. So if you're up against, say, a bastion, for example, he the bastions hate narwhals because you get no resistances. You can like. I think you can kill my Bastion Spider in about 10 shots of the Narwhal, or something like that. Less than 10 shots. Because none of the resistances count anymore. So they're good on hovers for sure. Um, I would say one Narwhal in a hover team might be good. Honestly, I'm going to try out a Narwhal Spider at one point, because they should be solid. You don't really want to run them on dogs. I wouldn't recommend it anyway, unless you want to mess around. But if you've got a new Battle Pass, very much recommend Narwhal, just because the freezing effect of ignoring resistances is matter as hell if you free someone's gun for example and then a teammate follows it up you're gonna have the same thing as a uh like a masto heat whereby you're more of a support build than damage but you can also do deal damage so they're very meta weapons at the moment i would recommend them if you've got a new battle pass Drogos are a joke they just don't do any damage and they don't snare people people just walk out of it porcupines are Decent relics. They're very good against dogs. They're good against spiders. But not very good against hovers. So say two out of three they can deal with pretty well. But they do weigh a lot. They're easy to take out. Uh, they, they're okay to be fair. I wouldn't recommend it as a first relic. Just because like I said two out of three instead of three out of three. So they're okay but they're nothing special. Uh, but no they are. They, they, they're okay but they're not the best. Um, dove, dove is crap, don't get dove, just don't. Uh, don't get fortunes either, the energy consumption is too high, they don't deal as much damage as you want, they're just for messing about. Same with Ripper, just not worth it to be honest. The fact that they deal less damage to bumpers than they should is just stupid to be honest. Because like, they're really fun weapons, but they're not very good. Um, Annihilators, I'm ignoring drones, they're for people who can't aim, I don't respect or care for them. Kaiju, Kaiju's not that good these days just because the mobility nerf when you're charging means you can only run it on spiders and there's better things to run it on run on spiders than a Kaiju. It deals good damage and has good dura but I wouldn't recommend it. Scorpions are pretty bad these days to be honest. Uh, the damage isn't that good. They're good at shooting movement parts, I'll give them that. So if you're a scorpion hover shooting at a spider's legs, they'll do good. If you're a scorpion hover shooting at other hovers, they're very good. So if you're, for example, if you want to deal with another hover team and you want to triple their mobility, a scorpion is pretty damn good because they're accurate and they can hit hovers pretty reliably. But besides that, the damage just isn't there and they weigh too much for their dura. So for example, if you want to compare this, a scorpion, it weighs 900 kilograms for 550 dura. Compare that to say a helicon. A helicon has... 130 less dura, but it weighs 600 kilograms less. You know, they're too heavy to be fair. 
that's probably one of the biggest things. So on a Hover, your Hover's going to be kind of squishy, especially with the Hover tonnage nerfs that come in and all that stuff. Scorpion Hover's are easy to deal with, either. A Thursus, still pretty bad. Damage just isn't enough. I wouldn't recommend it at all. Wouldn't recommend Scorpions either, actually. Uh, first, us damage just isn't there, and uh, it's got decent dual and whatnot, it's got decent turn speed, but nah, it just needs more damage, it's not good. Flock isn't a weapon. So yeah, that is all of the various things I will talk about now, what guns I would recommend the most. So if I were to pick, if I was new to the game, knowing what I know, and I had to pick, start with a weapon, I would pick Punishers as my first relic for sure. Just because, like I said, a Punisher is a DPS weapon. They have hit scan, so they're easier to land shots with. Um, they can fight anything in the game. If I'm on a Punny Spider, I don't really care what the enemy picks. If they pick hovers, I'll chase them down. If they pick spiders, then I'll just fight them evenly. If they're dogs, I can deal with them too. Punny Spider is a incredibly versatile gun, and it's an incredibly good gun, especially on console. Uh, number two on my list would be Mastodons, just because I'm a spider guy at heart. Mastodons are very good. You pair them with punnies, you're going to be in for a good time. They, Like I said, they do a lot of damage, and it's the heating. The heating is so good on the Mastodons, that's the reason you run them. In a Clan Wars environment, you have a Masto with a punny backing you up, and you're going to do a lot of damage. You're going to have a lot of Dura, and it's very reliable. And then... And like I said, with the versatility, the reason I prefer guns is because of their versatility. So punnies can fight anything, mastodons can fight anything. If I'm in a Masto spider, I can fight anything. If they go dogs, I can heat for my punishers. If they go sp hovers, I will chase them down. I can front up the damage and charge the hover teams. Because if I'm on like a Masto Bastion, my Bastion has a bunch of health, my Mastos have a bunch of health. I can be the front man and I don't really care about getting shot by anything on a hover other than energy weapons. Um, so they're very good, and they can fight dogs, and other spiders. Have those other spiders and dogs, they can fight anything, that's those. And then third on my list would be firebugs, and for the exact same reason, it's versatility. A firebug can fight anything. If I'm on a firebug and they pick hovers, I can chase them down. If I'm on a firebug and they pick other dogs, I can trade evenly, and if they're on a firebug and they go spiders, I can get someone in the back and make it work. It's versatility at the end of the day that makes guns good. If you can fight anything on a build reliably, then it's a very good gun. And yeah, firebugs do incredibly good damage. They're very good dura. You can armor them within a build, so it's very hard to take out. And they're just very, very good guns. Uh, soon, I will probably be getting another set of relics, and I'm probably going to get a, a Punishers. Because at that point, my Clan Wars lineup will be a Masto Spider. And the Masto Spider is just a journalist. I can play anything with it. Then I got a Punny Spider as number two. And that's basically meant for anti-dog. But again, I can fight anything on it. And I'll have a Firebug as number three. That's three very good builds and three very versatile builds. And that's probably going to be one of the strongest lineups you can have in terms of Clan Wars. Probably get that. That would be Punishers or Porks, but it'll probably be Punnies knowing me, just because of the versatility. Like I said, Porcupines... They're very good against dogs, they're good against spiders, but they're not very good against hovers, so that's two out of three. Whereas Punishers are three out of three. Anyway, that's everything described. If anyone has any questions, or if I missed out anything, please let me know. But in terms of Clan Wars, that's what you want need to know. I figured I wouldn't want people wasting their coins or anything, so I'd make this video. Anyway, have a nice day, guys. Have a nice weekend and whatnot. I will catch you for a stream tomorrow morning, probably.